Hey friend, Mike McCurry here, and you're listening to Bible Tract Echoes, and I'm so very thankful that you are. Now, I've got my Bible right here, and you might need yours, because we're going to be diving into a section of the book of Matthew. I'm going to ask you to turn and find your place there in Matthew. If you are driving right now, or maybe you're listening while you're doing dishes, or cleaning the house, or maybe you're in some circumstance where you can't grab your Bible, that's okay. I'll make sure to read it for you in just a few moments. But if you can, feel free to grab your Bibles. I want you to see what God has for us directly out of His Word today. I'm so privileged to have the opportunity to speak to so many of you right now. It's incredible to me. It's really, I'm almost incredulous about the fact that this program is playing on over 100 radio stations today. I'm so blessed to have this opportunity, and I'm so very thankful for each and every one of you that tune in. Many of you faithfully tune in day after day. You're such a blessing to me. I'm going to ask you to tune your ears to what God has for us today. What we speak about and what I speak to you about, it may be one of the most near and dear things to my heart that I've ever discussed in a week of Bible Tract Echoes. I endeavor to be, and I, I think I accomplish for the most part, the my goal of being transparent, of being real. I know authentic is a buzzword these days, but truly, I endeavor to be authentic, to be real, to not put on a facade or a front. And this week, I definitely want to make sure that not just for the sake of connecting with you, not just so we gain listeners, that's not the point whatsoever. I believe what we talk about this week could be a help to a Christian out there. And I'm hoping that Christian might be you. Now, before we dive in, I'm going to tell you about a gospel tract. I've got a few in my hand right now. Let me tell you about this one that I have right now. This gospel tract is called Proclaim Liberty. Proclaim Liberty. It begins with a verse from the Bible, Leviticus 25 and verse 10. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Now, this gospel tract right here, it has kind of an Americana feel to it. It has a stylized American flag look on the front. But this gospel tract could be used almost anywhere and everywhere in the United States. Maybe you'd like to leave one of these for your waiter or your waitress at your favorite restaurant. Maybe you could just slide it across to the cashier at Walmart. Regardless of where you use it, I think this gospel tract could be a help to people because there's so many people around the world world, but especially here in the good old U.S. of A., they feel trapped. They don't feel free. We are blessed with, we have the privilege of some rights and responsibilities granted to us by God and our founders' pens in the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the Declaration of Independence, and all of those things. But so many, spiritually speaking, are bound. And this gospel tract talks about how we, how you and I, can have true liberty through Jesus Christ. I'd encourage you to go to BibleTractsInc.org. That's BibleTractsInc.org. You can get some of our gospel tracts right there. And as always, they are free. Now, I've got my Bible. I'm going to go to the book of Matthew myself here. And I'm going to flip over to Matthew chapter number six. That's where we're going to find our text today. Those of you that key in on specific chapters of scripture, you may have some inkling, some understanding of where we are going. I've, I've put this short study off for a couple of weeks because it just seems to keep growing. I feel like I don't want to delay any longer because what we talk about, as I've already mentioned, could be such a help to so many, not because it comes from me, but because it comes from Scripture. Matthew chapter number 6. I'll begin in verse number 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father. Uh, instantly you're thinking, oh, this is the Lord's Prayer, what we call the Lord's Prayer. Oftentimes it could be more accurately called the model prayer. But I want you to think about this here. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. We'll pause there for just a moment. We're going to be looking at the model prayer, but we're going to be looking at it through the lens and in the context of how I personally prepare for my prayer time. We're not just going to look at this in a clinical uh, way. We're not just going to look at this uh, for the sake of teaching a lesson or even preaching a message. I'm going to walk through how I personally prepare for my time with God. I truly believe every Christian should have time that they spend with God. It's amazing to me how often Christians, and I'm talking to myself, I'm looking at myself in the mirror when I say this, how often we are so busy for God, but we spend so little time with God. And these things ought not so to be. And so I'm going to spend just a few brief moments maybe helping you with your prayer time. Every Christian should have a prayer time. I believe every Christian should have a prayer list. And I'd encourage you to begin. And maybe today would be a time that you'd, for the first time, maybe in a long time, or for the first time ever, you would grab maybe even just a piece of scratch paper. I'd rather you start with a piece of scratch paper than with nothing at all. Grab a pencil, grab a pen. For me, I, I wanted to invest in my prayer time. I mentioned this a few weeks ago. And so not long ago, I got an iPad. And that's what I do my prayer list on. That's what I take my sermon notes on and things. For me, it works for me. Some people, they want to, they prefer to do it with paper and pen and a notebook. I absolutely, honestly, I probably prefer that way. But my issue is I can be a little unorganized. And so the iPad helps keep everything in front of me. And so that's just why I use it. But if you have a tablet of some kind. For me, the pencil that comes with the i that I buy with the iPad, it helps me out a lot. And you say, Brother Micah, that's a chunk of change, isn't it? Isn't that that's quite an investment? Well, I believe you can't invest too much in your walk with God. And so, do you need electronics to have a devotional time? Absolutely not. But for me, it just helps me remain a little bit more consistent and it helps me track my prayer just a little bit better. So I'd encourage you to consider those things. But if you say, I don't have anything. I, all I have is this receipt from the store I just went to and a, and a pencil. Great, let's start with that because you can always copy that over to something else later. I'd encourage you to think about those things. As we begin, I want to talk about how I start. I, I don't even know if we're going to get through the first two words of the model prayer today. But I begin, for me, before I truly, I, I guess you could call it prayer, but it's almost more reflection, more meditation, not in some hooky spooky way, but just spending some time talking to God about those first two words of the model prayer, our Father. I have this written down in my notes, actually, and normally at the beginning of my prayer time, I'll go through this every day, not in some kind of words of affirmation, not in some kind of mantra, but because I want to remind myself, our Father. You think about it, those are possessive words. Those are personal words. They're familiar and they speak of family. You think about the fact that we have the privilege of calling him our father. You know, if I were to say my father, you would probably assume I'm talking about Chris McCurry. If, we were, if I were to say a father, I could be talking about any number of fathers. But when I say to Christian brothers and sisters, our father, there's only one being that I could be speaking of. Of course, we're talking about our Father, which art in heaven. As I said, they're clarifying and they're comforting words. These words should make us want to pause. They should make us want to praise. And they should make us want to pray. Our Father. You know, there in, in, in chapter number 6, verse number 9... After this manner, the, it begins, Jesus speaking to his disciples, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. It's almost as if, and truly, it's as if there's an expectation 
of prayer. But here's the amazing thing. I think this may be the landing place for our thought today because I want to convey to you how important your prayer life is. It doesn't say like it would maybe in Galatians chapter 6, ye who are spiritual, pray. It doesn't say you who are close to God. It doesn't say you that uh, have um, some special connection. It doesn't say pastors. It doesn't say priests. It doesn't say uh, deacons. It doesn't say anyone with any special title. After this manner, therefore pray ye. And this book, this Bible, I realize there are many letters in it. There are many individual books written to specific groups of people. But here, think about who Jesus is talking to. He's talking to his disciples. Are you one of his disciples? You say, I could never be as great as them. Now think about this. Think about his disciples. Think about the mistakes they made. In the immediate aftermath of Jesus' crucifixion, they abandoned the cause of Christ and go back to fishing. Peter, constantly putting his foot in his mouth and cutting people's ears off with his sword. These are the people he's talking to. He's not talking to people that were perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Jesus doesn't need perfect people to pray. The disciples weren't perfect. You don't have to be perfect. Now, should we strive to live in a, a Christ-like way? Absolutely. But understand, if you're waiting to be perfect to pray, then you will never pray. Think about it. Our father, he's the prodigal's father. He's the prisoner's father. He is the father of the preacher, but he's also the father of the penitent. If you've got a past, you have a father. If you can't find peace, you have a father. He's the father of the powerful and the father of the pitiful. Persuasiveness, politics, and prosperity cannot sway him. But his children calling out, our father, always gets his attention. My question for you today is this. Do you pray? I'd encourage you, please, maybe one or two of these notes will be a help to you. Would you consider beginning, if you have not already, beginning your prayer life? You say, I can only do one minute, two minutes, I don't have time. Well, friend, if we're too busy to pray, we're too busy. I'd encourage you today to begin praying. And if you have let your prayer life lax, or it could be better, let's redouble our efforts. Thank you so much for listening. I'd love to hear from you. Let me give you a phone number one time. You can text me. I'd love for you to reach out three zero nine three one six seven two four zero i look forward to talking to you tomorrow god bless thank you for joining us today for bible track echoes a ministry of bible tracks incorporated if you would like to receive a free sample booklet of all of our tracks you can contact us by calling three zero nine 828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 130, Dwight, Illinois, 60420. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.